First Timothy chapter 5. First, uh, Paul addresses relationships within the church. What Paul is saying to Timothy is, Timothy, here's how relationships should work within the church. You honor older people as fathers and mothers. Younger people, you treat them as brothers and sisters. And those are widows, honor them. Verses 4 onwards, he is talking about believers' responsibility for their own family. And he starts off, of course, by addressing a situation of need in the family, that of widows. If they have children or grandchildren, show piety at home, for this is good and acceptable before he says, you know, this is who a real widow is. And uh, she, she spends her time in prayer, verse 5, in supplications and prayers. And, uh, and that's how she's got to live. She's, she's spending her time doing that. And notice verse 7. He says, and these things command that they may be blameless. I mean, this is the right way to live before God. Verse 8, he says, look, if somebody does not provide for his own Especially for his own household, he says, very strong. He's denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Verse 9, a widow is somebody above 60 years of age. And verse 10, she is somebody, uh, she's been the wife of one man. And verse 10, she's um, really served the church. She's been, uh, she's done a lot of good works. She's uh, Taking care of strangers, serve the saints and, and those who have been afflicted. And she's been diligent in every good work. So that's the definition. If you find such a person, 60 years of age or above, or been the wife of one man and she's really served the church. Now the church has a responsibility. You need to take care of such people. Young widows. And what's Paul saying there? He's saying basically, if young widows... Uh, they're left by themselves. They get into all sorts of unnecessary things. So he encourages in that passage there, let, uh, verse 14, let them marry, bear children, manage a home. The church should really take care of people who do not have the means to take care of themselves. But those who have the ability, they should take care of the parents or the grandparents, take care of them. Verse 17, let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in word and doctrine. Now, implying there that, look, we are going to treat everybody with honor, but the elders, the word elders as a presbyter, that means uh, it's used for anybody in spiritual leadership. Those who labor in word and doctrine, let them be treated with double honor. Verse 19. Do not receive an accusation against an elder except from two or three witnesses. So if somebody comes and says, so he's telling Timothy, look, somebody comes and tells you, okay, I found some problem here with this leader. You know, you appointed him and got it from. You don't make a decision based on one person's words. What do you got to do? Investigate. You need at least two or more witnesses. Those who are sinning, so that means leaders who are continuing to sin, those who are sinning rebuke in the presence of all that the rest also may fear. So Timothy, as a leader, you've got to be, be careful that you do nothing out of prejudice, your personal bias, or partiality, favoritism. Don't lay hands on anybody means don't appoint anybody into leadership. In a hurried way. And then he says, nor share in other people's sins. Keep yourself pure. Don't get caught up in other people's wrongdoing. No longer drink only water. <laughs> but use a little, you know. <laughs> for your stomach's sake. And your frequent infirmities. Okay. Now Paul is addressing a problem. Timothy had. He had a stomach problem. Right. And so he was saying, okay, Timothy, use a little wine for its medicinal value. Now, in summary, you know, I want, to, I want you to know, Timothy, that your lifestyle, the outcome of your lifestyle will become evident. So the key takeaway from chapter 5, 1 Timothy, is simply this, honor everybody. 